Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jenna. I'm with Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. And up there on your screen, you will see that I'm joined by two lovely ladies today. So Judy Hurst, um, who is representing, working alongside Emerging Destinations in the representation of Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel. And she will be conducting our webinar on Iceland with kids today. But we also have a, a guest, Beth Ann Young, with Iceland Air, who is going to give us some updates on the things going on with Iceland Air and all the cool new things they have going on this year. So before I pass things over to them, I'm just going to take a very quick minute to introduce our portfolio. If this is the first time that you're joining an Emerging Destinations webinar, then thank you so much for joining us. Um, up there on your screen, you'll see all of the different companies that we represent around the world. So we have a large portfolio in Africa, the Americas, and Europe. Um, there's too much to go over in a, in a brief amount of or short amount of time. So I will just introduce our European portfolio to you today, which is, of course, ISM Pro Travel, who we are talking about. ISM Pro Cruises, who does uh, circumnavigations around Iceland, starting and ending in Reykjavik. And then last but not least in our European portfolio, we also are representing the tourism board of Porto and the north of Portugal. So if you have questions about any of those that I mentioned or any of those that you see up there on your screen, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to give you a one-on-one, -on -one, um, do any training for you and your team um, at, at your convenience. So please feel free to get a hold of me. You see my email address up there on your screen. And then last but not least, a couple of housekeeping items before I hand things over to these lovely ladies. Um, as always, this webinar will be recorded and we do post all of our webinars on our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel and our website. So you can go peruse, have a look at any of the ISUN webinars or other areas that we represent. Um, any of those webinars will be available there for you to watch. And the webinar is being recorded. So at some point this week, I promise I will be sending you a recording and a follow-up of this webinar. But if if I don't and you want to watch it before the end of today, if you need to step out or miss anything, uh, you will be able to find it on our website and our YouTube channel by the end of today. And as always, we will try to keep things as brief as possible. Um, but if you do have any questions, we these ladies will be staying on to do a Q&A at the end. So please feel free to participate and type through any questions throughout the presentation that you might have using the GoToWebinar control panel. And I will ask these two lovely ladies um, any questions that you have at the end. So please feel free to uh, utilize their knowledge, and I look forward to hearing what they have to say. So, Beth Ann, we will hand things over to you to start, and then on to Judy. Well, great. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Um, my name is Beth Ann, and I am with Iceland Air uh, for the West Coast. So, thanks for joining us. There we go. Our route map this year, we are serving more destinations than ever before. Uh, we currently are flying now to 16 destinations in North America. All of our flights do go directly into Iceland. Um, new this year is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, we are witnessing the largest flight schedule of the company's history. We do have seven, uh, 54 destinations total with 785 connections um, and countless more through our partnerships. Uh, partner airlines, uh, speaking of, are we do have coach air flights uh, in place with Air Baltic, Alaska Airlines, Finnair, JetBlue, SAS, and new this year, this previous year, was Turkish Airlines. Uh, we have interline agreements in North America, also with Porter, uh, Sun Country, and WestJet. And the main thing is, of course, frequent flyer reciprocation with Alaska Airlines and JetBlue. All of our flights do go directly to Keflavik Airport, our hub and our home. And what's really fantastic about Keflavik is its small size. Compared to other uh, European international flights uh, that are much longer than ours, going to much larger airports, the size and the ease of Keflavik Airport really makes it easy for families to travel together. So our onboard service is remaining at two cabins. I know a lot of other airlines have introduced a premium economy class. We still only have two, uh, Saga class, which is our business class, as well as regular economy, but we do have extra legroom seats for purchase. 
So uh, our socket cabin, so our business class cabin is two and two seating. Uh, it is not a lay flat seat because again, all of our aircraft are utilized for the same North America flights as they are the two hour flights to go onward to mainland Europe. Um, but our business class service is more like a first class service um, European style, where you do get two pieces of checked luggage and lounge access and of course, complimentary Wi-Fi. And economy class uh, is three and three seating. And the main thing to point out here is we do have a 32 inch pitch for legroom, which is uh, substantial compared to our competition, uh, complimentary in-flight entertainment, but food and alcoholic be beverages are for sale in economy class. And that is one thing that you and your clients do need to know. But the good thing is that child meals are for free. So no one wants any child to go hungry. Uh, so as long as the child is booked as a child, we do offer free meals for children 12 years of age and under. And I hear they're very delicious too. Uh, we offer five fair families. Uh, so you can purchase uh, you know, what, anything that suits your needs. So anything from the non-refundable, non-changeable, all the way to a fully flexible, changeable, refundable type of ticket. And sustainability is something that all of us in the aviation industry do hold uh, you know, near and dear to our hearts. So we have an ambitious uh, goal of offsetting our carbon by 50% uh, by 2030, which the clock is ticking, um, but compared to our pre-pandemic levels. And what we are really known for is the stopover. So in case you are not just going to Iceland as your destination, if you are going onward to mainland Europe, just remember you can stop over in Iceland for up to seven days in both directions for the same price of your ticket to mainland Europe. So that's one of the key selling points as well. And more information can be found on our agent portal, agents.icelander.com. Uh, we offer fantastic industry discounts. Uh, so you can bring you and agents and companions. They are bookable in advance. Uh, there's a blackout period during the summer months, but otherwise you can request discounted tickets through our agent portal. And that's me, uh, Beth Ann at beyoungicelander.is. And with that, I will turn it over to Judy. Thank you so much, Beth Ann. It's always a pleasure to see you and hear you. And uh, I'm just delighted to be back again talking about my absolute favorite destination, Iceland. I think a lot of you are, know me and have uh, hopefully listened to some of our past webinars, which are all on emergingdestinations.com. As you know, today the topic is Iceland with kids. And I'm gonna talk about the incredible things there are to do in Iceland. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, should I bring kids to Iceland? What are they gonna see? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna eat? Are they gonna be happy? What time of year should we go? So I put together, this is just, um, just the barest of information, but just to give you a little bit of comparison, Iceland is a year-round destination. There is a lot going on all year long. Granted, in the winter, you're gonna be a little colder. The days are gonna be a little shorter, um, but that's when you can see the Northern Lights. And also there are fewer tourists and the holiday times in Iceland are absolutely phenomenal and magical. As you can see, the summer, we've got long days, up to 22 hours of daylight. That The warmer temperatures, and I know a lot of you are cringing, but that is Iceland. Um, you're not going to be laying on a beach in a bikini, so to speak, but you will go into the geothermal hot springs. Of course, our national day is June 17th, and it is phenomenal. Great um, things going on there. Did you know we've got 60 golf courses in Iceland? So you can golf in the summer, you can fish in the summer. But of course, year round down at the bottom, you can see we've got some other things going on. So as the little thing in the middle says, there is no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. A lot of the flights, I should say most all of the flights to Iceland arrive early in the morning. And you probably won't get into your hotel room unless you've pre-booked the night before. So the question arises, well, what are we going to do? We can't get into our room till the afternoon. What shall we do? And especially if you have children, we want to keep them occupied. 
I did this, my last trip was in June and I got the chance to visit this lava show. It is fantastic, really, it is fantastic. It is educational, it is fun, and it is also quite affordable and they open early in the day. Another idea for day one on arrival is the flyover Iceland which opens at 9.30, you can see the pricing. And this, this is just a great way to get an introduction to the destination and what you're gonna see and what you're going to do. And this is right down town Reykjavik. But I have to say that this is one of my favorite places to suggest to people. It is the Perlin Museum. And it is like five museums in one is award winning. It is very affordable. It opens at 9 a.m. It is about 15 minutes from downtown Reykjavik. It is just a wonderful way that you can see and experience Iceland before you've even gotten very far. Children love it because all of the um, exhibits are interactive. You can learn about the Northern Lights. You can actually go into an ice cave, learn about the volcanoes, the puffins, the whales. It is a terrific, terrific place. Also, they do have a cafe, which is lovely, uh, very affordable. Another wonderful thing, by the way, Iceland has, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm gonna say something crazy like, over 400 museums for this tiny little country. They are all wonderful, they are unique, they are different, most are interactive. And this one is a great way to learn about the Viking culture, which is how, of course, Iceland started. The Viking World Museum, it's only 10 minutes from the airport. You can see children are free. Adults are only $15. Remember how everyone says Iceland is so expensive. It is for some things, but truthfully, not when it comes to the museums. Another great place, this is a, sort of a wax museum kind of a thing, and this is in Reykjavik. Again, it opens at 10 o'clock in the morning. Children are free. Uh, little children are free, great place. Again, it's gonna be another way to get a feel for what the Vikings were all about and how Iceland actually began. Great museum. Now, Iceland is a very, Icelandic is a very, very difficult language. I've been uh, going to Iceland for over 20 years and I have to be very honest, I don't even attempt because look at that word. We, uh, I couldn't even tell you how, maybe Beth Ann can do it, but I sure can't. So I'm just gonna say here is another great open air museum, which is dedicated to preserving a little piece of how Reykjavik began for future generations. Lots of exhibits, the original buildings, a general store, a blacksmith, a church, lots of great information. Again, look at the cost, very, very affordable. The Maritime Museum, another interesting place to go with the children, and it is very affordable. Children and seniors are free. It's right in downtown Reykjavik. It's at the harbor, and it's about the all-important maritime, that that is what Iceland was founded on, the cod industry, fishing, and you learn a whole lot, and you can even walk aboard that wonderful ship. In Reykjavik itself, these are just incredible landmarks. Algrimskerka Church is the main church and cathedral in Reykjavik. It is a Lutheran church. It is one of the most photographed attractions in the city. It's the largest church in Iceland and towers over the city. So when you're inside, definitely take a peek, but there is an elevator that will take you to the top of the steeple and you will have an incredible view of the city. Harpa Concert Hall, another beautiful feat of architecture. You can attend performances. Uh, there is a show there, which is so much fun. It's called How to Become Icelandic in 60 Minutes. It's uh, very humorous, very entertaining. It is not um, P-rated. I mean, you can bring the kids. It is great. It's affordable tickets. But just look at the architecture and just walking around the harbor and looking at Harpa. It is absolutely beautiful. Reykjavik is a very small city, very walkable. And then when you do, look at what you get to see, all these beautiful street art and murals 
all over the city. Now, can't even think about Iceland without talking about the Blue Lagoon, the geothermal hot springs, because for many people, this is one of the main reasons they go. They go to see the Northern Lights and they go to the Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon is or has reopened, uh, maybe a little bit abbreviated hours, but the, uh, the latest volcanic eruption is in that general area. So uh, they do alter some of their opening times, but generally speaking, uh, they open at eight o'clock in the morning. This is not an inexpensive uh, endeavor for the adults. The prices range from 72 to about $95, and there are different inclusions uh, that you can get, and that's why the prices vary. But it is definitely something to see and do. It's wonderful. You can get massages in the water. There is a bar. You can get a drink. There's a swim-up bar. There's also around uh, the perimeter of the pool are, is the white silica gel that people put on their faces, and that is um, like a, an exfoliant. It is absolutely wonderful. While the Blue Lagoon may not fit everyone's pocketbook, Iceland is a swimming pool culture. It is their go-to. It's what the locals do every day. Kids have to learn how to swim in order to graduate from school, but this is their meeting place. So every little town, every little village will have a public pool that is geothermally heated. So you can do these year round and look at those prices. You really can't argue with that. And it's open till 10 o'clock at night. So it's something to think about. And a lot of these that I'm going to show you, these local pools, do have saunas and steam rooms and cold plunge pools as well. They may not give you a towel. You may have to rent a towel. You may have to bring a towel. But those prices certainly are attractive. I'm not Again, I'm not even going to pronounce the name of the pool. I can't do that. Breitholt I can do. That's another uh, local swimming pool. 15 minutes from Reykjavik, it's open seven days a week. Children under 15 are free. Pretty good deal here. And they all have water slides. Have you noticed that? Your kids will absolutely love the local pools. This, you won't find the water slides at the Blue Lagoon. Uh, water World, Wagner World, is an hour. So this is a little further out from Reykjavik, but definitely out and about or uh, able to get to. They have an indoor and an outdoor pool. Again, water slides. This is really great for the little kids. And look, they're basically free. I had the pleasure of visiting, and this is a tongue twister, Gvamsvik Hot Springs when I was there. And this is spectacular. I cannot rave enough about this. It's about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Reykjavik. They are now offering uh, transfers from the city. It is natural. There are eight different hot springs, varying temperatures, as well as the ocean. And you have free use of the paddle boards, the changing facilities. You have private changing facilities, private showers, and they do have an absolutely wonderful cafe with some a truly incredible seafood soup. This is a terrific place. Again, another um, local type of a place is called the Secret Lagoon. It is an all-time favorite. Um, the locals love it. The tourists love it. Children here are free under 14. You do have to rent a car. This is, as you can see, a little bit more of the natural type of a geothermal pool. Fontana is another really interesting one, a geothermal pool. But what they offer is they have this activity where you can see how they bake bread in the ground using the geothermal energy. They show you how they make the, the, the batter, they put it in the pot, they wrap the pot, they bury it into the ground, and it bakes for 24 hours. Um, they do have a cafe there, so you can actually then buy the bread, have wonderful soup and bread with butter. It is a terrific place to go. Fontana is definitely, uh, I think, a really good one. If 
your clients are heading up to the northern part of Iceland and they're going up to Akureyri. The Akureyri local swimming pool is the one on the left. Look at that. That looks like an amusement park. Look at the prices. You can't beat it. You just can't beat this. For the um, more sophisticated type of experience, shall we say, there is the Forest Lagoon right in the north up in Reykjavik, a little bit more pricey. This would be sort of along the lines of what the new Sky Lagoon in Reykjavik or the Blue Lagoon would be. Wonderful, they have a great restaurant in there as well. So we've got the pools, that's definitely something that people go to. Iceland also has geysers or geysers as they say, the most active geyser in Iceland, it erupts every six to eight, guaranteed, guaranteed. You don't have to hang around long and wait. And as you can see how close the people are, yep, you're right there. You really can feel the heat. It is just really an amazing thing that a lot of kids, I think, would just love to see this. And adults as well. Waterfalls, oh yeah. I, I don't know who counted, but they do say that there are about 10,000 waterfalls. They are everywhere. Um, Golfus and Celia Landsfoss and Detifoss and Godafoss. Foss, by the way, means waterfall. Wonderful, wonderful thing. And you see the gentleman up in the right. You can actually, uh, Iceland is not like, you know, the United States. You can walk literally right up to the waterfall, walk under the waterfall, walk behind the waterfall. Yep, you're going to get wet. Skogafoss. I love, you can see this, fall. you see the size of it, the people, but then there, if you're so inclined, you can walk 527 steps to go to the top of the waterfall and get a different view. You can see those steps, they're pretty good now. I don't know in the winter time, that may be a little bit challenging to do Skogafoss. Another activity, that kids like, you can see are the ice caves. This is something really, really cool. Um, they give you crampons for your shoes. The ice caves um, are sort of a year round activity, but dependent on, it's weather dependent because some of them, if the, uh, due to the in, uh, increase in temperature and climate, they will start uh, melting too much water so they're not really safe. But when you work with Iceland Pro Travel, we are the land operator, we'll put all these things together for you and they definitely check and make sure which caves are open and safe for everyone to go into. A really good experience, something really different. Oh, this is so great. Jokosarlan Glacier Lagoon, another one of my personal favorites. Up close, personal, sometimes there are seals laying on the glaciers. You can do it with, um, a zodiac or you can do it with the duck boat there's several different tours that you can take but you are definitely going to get out in the water then across oh well almost across the road from yoko sarlan glacier lagoon is a black sand beach where chunks and pieces of the glaciers as they break off come and go on the beach you can touch them so they call it diamond beach you can touch them you can sit on them um it's just a great great you can see the kids love it it's a great thing to do definitely this is another experience called into the glacier it's the only place in the world where you can physically actually go into the glacier the tunnel obviously was created man-made created it's not a tiny little tunnel you can go through it you go with a guide, the truck on the left, that goes up the outside of the glacier. And then you walk in, they give you crampons, so that, they, that you put it on your feet so it, it's safe. And you're with a guide and they're explaining the whole idea of how the glaciers are formed. And you can see it and actually you are inside. They even have a chapel in there, people get married in the glacier. And if you want, you can go snowmobiling on the outside of the glacier. Snowmobiling is a year-round activity. It's a little bit pricier than some of the other things we've talked about, but it is a wonderful, wonderful activity to be, you know, doing that on the glacier. So when it comes to animals, oh, we've got some. 
we don't have any predators, but we do have sheep. There are, again, whoever counted the waterfalls then went on and counted the sheep. So they say there are 500,000 sheep in Iceland. That's more than human population. It's a very special breed of sheep. Their wool is like a dual double coat, and it makes it excellent quality for the uh, typical Icelandic sweaters, which turn out, even though they're wool sweaters, they are waterproof and they are warm. They are called Lopa Pesa. That's what they are called, and they are great. We've got birds, lots and lots of birds, if you've got bird watchers. But Iceland is the puffin watching capital of the world. As you can see, again, I don't know who's doing all this counting. Eight to 10 million puffins inhabit the island. It's home to more than 60% of the world's population. Best time is going to be in May, uh, May through August. So it's basically the summer months. That little guy down on the lower right, that's a puffin baby. That's how they start out before they lose all that fuzzy feathers and get their uh, traditional markings. Interesting birds. Well, if you're into whales, we got them too. Uh, whale watching is seriously a year round kind of a thing. In fact, February is a good month, um, but the peak season is the summer months. It's June through August. We've got, as you can see, killer whale, humpback, mink, uh, sperm, blue and fin whales. If you don't want to go out, into the water and see them. If you're not a boat person, there is an incredible whale museum that is a great thing. Even if you do go out in the water, it's another great thing. See how close they get? This is a very, very popular experience. And you can see you do get jumpsuits, so you're going to not get too wet. Well, what can I say? My heart melts. Um, I get all gushy inside because I am obsessed with the Icelandic horses. They are an incomparable breed. They are gentle creatures. They are easy to ride. They are always very friendly and they live outside year round. They generally don't live in the barns. Uh, their coat changes in the winter months to this nice fuzzy, look at that hair. Look at those mink. Gosh, they are so cute. They're short and stocky and they have five gates and you can go horseback riding year round. A wonderful, wonderful thing. I know a lot of people are going to say, why would I want to go to a tomato farm? But you do. You want to go to Friedhammer Tomato Farm. It was a hydroponic venture uh, that reached tremendous success. Uh, they have roughly 10, 12,000 tomato plants grown hydroponically. No chemicals no pollutants. They opened a little restaurant. They did not even know what they started, but now you have to have a reservation to get in. Um, it's affordable. I'm telling you, it is the best tomato soup you have ever had. Um, and you see what I love? See on the table? See that plant? That's a basil plant. And you can sort of see the handles of a scissor. So what you do is you cut your basil leaves and you put it in your tomato soup. Great bread and even tomato ice cream. Adjacent to Friedheimer Tomato Farm are their horse stables. And they will put on a show where they will teach you all about the Icelandic horses, uh, what makes them so special. And then you do have the opportunity, as you can see, to pet and fondle them. They are friendly, they are wonderful. This is a great experience for everyone. Okay, we still have four-legged creatures. They're a little bit shorter. Um, Iceland is a cat culture. They are, uh, there's cats everywhere in Iceland, sort of like Turkey a little bit. Uh, this is a cat cafe that I got to visit in June when I was there. It is a place where um, you can adopt a cat, but you can also sit there. And if you're so inclined, uh, the cats will come and sit with you. You can have a cup of coffee, you can have a snack, you can have a bowl of soup and have uh, a cat on your lap at the same time. Very, very friendly cats. A new trend, not, not for us, but in Iceland are food halls. We call them food courts, but in Iceland they're food halls. They're a little bit more upscale than what you may see in our typical um, shopping malls. But what I like about this is everything is affordable. 
everyone can go and everyone can eat a different cuisine. You don't have to all eat the same thing. Right now, there are seven just in Reykjavik City alone. Uh, I went, I ended up going to the same one three nights in a row because the food was great. And truthfully, um, the tourists don't go here. It was mostly locals. And I just loved watching the dynamics of the families come in and just listen to everybody. They'll come in, just have a cup of coffee, just have a glass of wine. It's a great place to hang out. And there are a number of them serving all kinds of cuisine. The food in Iceland is really, really good. I will say it's New York pricing. Your, your food's gonna be expensive, but it's your alcohol and your beer. That's where, that's where you're really gonna be spending your money. Okay, you may have heard about the Icelandic hot dog. It is called pulsar, and it's really more a combination of lamb, beef, and pork. Uh, very, very, very reasonable, about $4 for a hot dog. This is world famous hot dog stand. Really, that's all it is. It is a hot dog stand. There are benches, there are seats around. People will wait in line for, I don't know, forever to get a hot dog. Uh, the stand opens around nine. It stays open till midnight, sometimes on the weekend later till two o'clock in the morning. Um, I, the, the hot dogs are long, you can see in the lower uh, corner, and they top it with various toppings, onions, uh, mustard, remoulade, ketchup. You can ask for it with the works and they put everything on it. But this is definitely something you should experience. It's part of the Icelandic culture. Another thing, it's never too cold for ice cream. Icelanders, I mean, they're obsessed with ice cream. They will go out in, in just blizzards and get ice cream. They have soft serve ice cream. They have regular uh, dipped ice cream. They have my favorite rye bread ice cream, which sounds weird, but remember Fontana and they were baking bread in the ground. That turns out to be a very dark type of a rye bread, uh, very molasses-y tasting. They dry that, crumble it, and they put that into the vanilla ice cream base, and it is absolutely scrumptious. That's the rye bread ice cream. But you can see these kids. I love the place up at the top. Um, you're actually in a barn, and you're watching them milk the cows, and they use that those cows. You're eating their milk turned into ice cream another fun activity. Absolutely, kids will love this. This is brand new. For those of you who are really into, your kids are into video games, um, this is fantastic. It's called 1238, The Battle of Iceland. As you can see, it's virtual reality, interactive, historical experience that all of a sudden, you're in the middle of a Viking battle, a historical events. This is such a super thing to do. Again, I think the pricing is pretty reasonable. And this is open seven days a week until five o'clock at night. This is also brand new. It's called Skulp, and it's a huge trampoline playground. Oh, it's pretty close to Reykjavik. They have climbing towers and a whole bunch of other interactive things that kids can do. You know, you may get a, a rainy day. You may get a day where it's very windy and it's too cold for the kids to go out. As you can see, I wanted to show you that there are a lot of things that you can do that are indoors as well, that are fun and entertaining and educational for the kids and families to do. In the event, that you come to Iceland not in the winter months and you have no chance of seeing the northern lights. This starts out and you think to yourself, oh, this is going to be really, really hokey. I don't want to be indoors and look through it. I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. The Aurora Center is the employees or, or the volunteers there are all professional photographers. So if you bring a real camera, they will show you the settings to get the optimum pictures, but you go into another room and all of the lights that you are looking at through your virtual reality goggles, those are all their actual photographs that these photographers have taken of the Northern Lights. They are untouched, they are real, but you're inside, you're not outside, you're not hoping you're gonna see them you will see them. Even if you do go in the winter, you may not see the Northern Lights. We can't guarantee that. So this is good for you to know that one way or another, you will get to see the Northern Lights. And this, they will tell you all about how, what, 
what creates Northern Lights, the natural phenomenon, and explain to you why you see different colors. Most often they're green, but they can appear purple, blue, yellow, incredible experience. If all of this um, running around and going around Iceland is a little too much for you, then I have to suggest you work with our sister company, Iceland Pro Cruises. Our ship is the Sea Venture and it's exploration style cruising in uh, the summer. Obviously it's a, a summer product. It's June and July. We have nine to 19 day sailings. As long as your children are eight years of age and older, that you can take the cruise and they will stay in the same cabin with the parents. So you can see um, the circumnavigation, they make about nine ports of call. So you do get completely around Iceland. You see it all. Shore excursions are included on the Zodiac. They're just a great, great thing to do. And you can see there is even a, there is a swimming pool. We have some entertainment, wonderful food. There's only 84 cabins on the ship. All of them are outside cabins and 18 of those have balconies. We do have some um, early bird specials that you can reach out to us and we, uh, we can tell you a little bit more about them, but you can book them till the end of February. And I really urge you to look into this. It's great, great value. And as we all know, cruising, you unpack once. So I hope that you uh, agree with me that Iceland is incredible. There's a lot there to see and do for everyone of all ages. Um, please shout out to us if you would like us to put together a presentation that you can show to potential families. If you want to put together a small group of several families, uh, maybe your kids go to a school and you wanna get a couple of uh, families to go together and go to Iceland, please give us the opportunity to create an itinerary just for you. We are happy, happy to help you. Uh, just a personal little plug up on the right. Um, on my Facebook page, JDH Associates, I do post daily facts and trivia on Iceland. So you'll learn a whole lot more than that. Um, Jenna, Beth Ann, are you with us? I am here, Judy. Thank you so much for that very informative presentation. I'm still here as well. Yeah, Great. I'm still here too. Perfect. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type those through now and I will ask these ladies. I know there's been a couple coming in. Um, do, 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 let's see. Okay, back to one of the first questions. Now, I'm not sure maybe you'll know the answer to this or one of you will know the answer to this. Um, is the restaurant still open on top of the Perlin Museums? Yes, it is. There you go. See, I that's not something I have <laughs> any idea. <laughs> the answer. Thank goodness for you, Judy. Um, and just, I will say that this webinar is being recorded. So if anybody does have to step away at this time, don't worry, I can respond to you or Judy can respond to you in an email. If you have anything uh, that you'd like to ask us or Beth Ann, please feel free to do so. Um, let's see. I have a question for Beth Ann. Sure, there you go, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Do you have group rates? I mean, not necessarily family rates, but do you have group rates on we Iceland? Do. We have a group desk here located here in North America. We okay. define a group as technically 15 people traveling together, but we can go down to 10. So as long as you do have an, a minimum of 10 people traveling on the exact same flights, exact same dates, we do have group rates for you. That's great. Good to know. All right. I guess I should have been locked and loaded after. <laughs> um, lots of great comments about the presentation. Um, here is one from Jillian. How can one get around without renting a car? You're going to book with Iceland Pro Travel. Perfect answer. <laughs> and we will create custom FIT and we have transfers, we have private guides. Um, I mean, in the event that you don't want a private guide, uh, there is a tremendous public transportation system 
Um, Reykjavik in itself is quite small. Getting outside of Reykjavik uh, would require, I mean, there are buses that you can do. There are, you know, day tours that we can set up for you as well. Um, Judy, can yeah. you put up the second to last slide that you had? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's a maybe. That one? Um, was it was it this one, Julianne? I'm not sure which one she was wanted. Was it about the cruise? The, she just said the second to last slide. Maybe I'm that one? That it was one of these. It was one of those for sure. Um, yeah, just keep bouncing back between them. No, I'm, no, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Another question for you. Um, can you ski in Iceland? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got, uh, now, we don't have ski resorts, so to speak, as um, other destinations might have. But we do have downhill skiing. We have hella skiing. Um, and I just lost my train of thought, but we do we do have definitely ski lifts and places that you can ski in the winter months. Yes, but it's yes. not a resort that you would stay at. Correct. That's... Located up in the north. Yeah, most, most of the ski was the yes for downhill cross country. You can do all over the country cross country skiing. Okay, um, do you ladies happen to know the update on the volcano eruption and how it's currently affecting the surrounding areas? Bethany, you want to I'm like, never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in time, it has subsided. Um, they are monitoring the situation, though, because uh, there are still continues to be seismic activity. Uh, we are concerned. It is located out near Keflavik Airport. And the main concern, so the town of Grindavik was evacuated. Um, thankfully, that's it's a very small town out there. And it did, when the eruption happened, it did uh, destroy a few houses. Three houses were ruined in this uh, particular eruption. Um, but all is well. As far as natural disasters go, I mean, no one died, no one was injured. So they just had to evacuate a town. So it has subsided. Uh, as you said, the Blue Lagoon has reopened in limited capacity, though. So, um, again, you just never know. Safety first. So, there is a website. Uh, it is called safetravel.is, and that keeps up to date information for um, what's happening with the volcanoes. Let's re repeat that again. Actually, I'll make sure to include that link in the yeah. webinar follow up for everybody. It's important. It's called Safe Travel. Safe, safe Travel. Yes, dot is, I believe. Yeah, that's a good one to know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap things up because we want to try to stay within our time limit. I know we've, we have lots of questions coming in, so I'll do a couple more and then we'll wrap it up there for the day. Um, how far is the airport from Reykjavik? It is about 45 minutes. So it is out at the end of the peninsula versus Reykjavik itself is down in the harbor in the inlet. So about 45 minutes with traffic. And there's lots of transportation yes. easy to get from the airport to Reykjavik? Yes, there are buses. Uh, it is a bus, not a train. So everyone knows there are no trains in Iceland. So it is a bus system or there's taxis, but uh, taxis are quite expensive. So it is a Reykjavik excursions, like a fly bus it's called. The bus is very dependable. They meet all of the arriving flights. And I took it back from uh, downtown Reykjavik. I took the fly bus back to the airport right on time. It's very easy. They help you with your luggage. You don't have to worry about it. It's really easy. I know a lot of people go, oh, a bus. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's really very dependable to do. Yeah, they definitely do it well. Absolutely. Okay, one last question. Um, Judy, I will let you answer this one. Um, since it's about Iceland Pro Travel, uh, do we have a minimum amount of days for FIT bookings? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Jenna, are you aware of any? <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to give that one to you. Um, no, we <laughs> definitely don't. I mean, if people are coming for a weekend, if they're coming for a couple days, we will we will gladly handle your FIT bookings, hotel reservations, car rentals, and everything in 
anything under the sun. So definitely contact any of us if you have any more questions. But thank you so much for joining us and for being so attentive and participating in this Q&A. Thank you, Beth Ann. It's so nice to have you join us again. It's been a while since you've jumped in on one of our webinars. So we'll make sure to keep you coming back. Um, more frequently. And Judy, as always, it is such a pleasure to listen to you talk about Iceland and hear your passion. So thank you both ladies for, for your wonderful presentations today. Thank you, Jenna, for your help. And thank you everyone who's still online. We really appreciate your support. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you for next month's um, Iceland Pro Cruises webinar. So I will be doing a follow-up later this week, but we really appreciate it. And have a good Wednesday and last day of January. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bless, bless.